If you are migrating an existing system onto serverless, you don't want to have to hit two separate APIs, one for the serverless endpoints you've created and one for your legacy API. It's much better to have one single API endpoint. In this video, we're gonna show you how you can proxy through serverless to your existing API. Hi guys, I'm Sam with Complete Coding, and in this video, we're gonna be learning how we can proxy an API request through serverless to an existing API. As I said in the intro, this could be that you have a legacy API system that you're slowly migrating over to serverless. Or there may be API endpoints that you can't migrate over to serverless because they're written in a language at the moment that isn't supported by lambdas. To do this, we can set up a proxy. This means you'll have a single API URL, which can then have all of your endpoints, whether it's the new serverless endpoints or existing API endpoints. We'll jump into the code and see how we can do that. Before we start trying to configure our API proxy inside our serverless project, we're actually gonna head over to our browser so that we can look at one of the APIs that we're going to proxy. If we move over to a browser, I'm gonna be using api.icndb.com slash jokes, which is a Chuck Norris jokes API. I can then say slash random, and this will give me back one of the random jokes from their database. Every time you refresh the page and make a new request, you get a new joke. Another option is if you remove random and replace it with the ID of a valid joke, you get back that exact joke. This means there are multiple endpoints sitting underneath this API, so we couldn't make a an example proxy for each of these requests. So if we head back into our serverless folder, we'll make a proxy for the whole API. To make a new endpoint, we do the same as we have previously, which is going down to our functions and setting up a new endpoint event. In here, we're gonna create a new function called proxy. Under that, it's gonna have a handler which we'll leave for now. And then it's gonna have events, which are gonna be HTTP, which is gonna create an endpoint for us. The path we're going to set to chuck-norris. And here is where the first new feature comes in. What we want to do is we want to have an API that says slash chuck-norris slash rand slash jokes slash random or slash jokes slash 18 and all of these want to be proxied through to that original Chuck Norris API. To do this we put curly braces and set the parameter in here to be proxy plus. This means that there could be multiple layers of proxy integration. As well as that we need to set a method and we can set this method for now to anything. The, the next new change is that we have to define the type of integration. Previously, we haven't had to do this because it has been a Lambda that is running after this, but because we're doing a proxy integration, we have to set this explicitly. So set an integration. And this is going to be HTTP dash proxy. Because this is a proxy integration, we need to provide some parameters about the request that this proxy needs to make. So the request has some parameters like the URI. This is just the URL of the API that we want to proxy through to. In our case, it is HTTP 
colon slash slash api dot i c n d b dot com forward slash proxy. So here we're using the parameters that are passed in here to define the parameters that we make the request to inside our HTTP proxy. As well as that, we need to set up the fact that we are passing these through as path parameters. So parameters and here the path parameters we're going to proxy these all through so that we can set proxy to true. The last thing we need to do is in our handler, we need to define a handler. For now, we're going to go with lam, lambdas slash endpoints slash proxy dot handler. So now we need to make that file inside our endpoints here. Create a new file called proxy.js. And inside this file, we need to make a very simple request. So we're going to start with the get user, copy everything in here, and paste it back. We don't need any of this user data. And the only thing we need to do is return a 200. So we're going to return a 200 that doesn't have any data. And we can delete everything else inside this file like that. So this is the simplest Lambda you could ever imagine, where it gets an event and it returns a 200. We have to do this so that serverless can actually deploy this type of proxy integration. So we need to save this file. And now we can go into our terminal and run SLS deploy. This will now deploy an API with a new endpoint called slash Chuck Norris, which will proxy any requests through to this API. So this is going to take a little while to build. So it's a great time to hit that like button because it really helps the channel out. So now that SLS deployment has finished, we can scroll up and we see that we have a new endpoint of slash dev slash Chuck Norris slash proxy plus. What we can do is we can copy this URL and head over into our browser. If we paste our new endpoint and then we need to pass through the parameters. So for us, it is jokes slash random and there we are hitting our API but we are still proxying that request through to the Chuck Norris API and getting back a random joke so that's joke 507 if we refresh the page we're now getting joke 220 if we want to go back and get that joke 507 we can change the word random to 507 refresh the page and we're getting back that joke just as we would if we were hitting our API directly. So this has shown that we can successfully proxy through a full depth API endpoint and so that it is being hit using our API. In this video, we've learned how we can very simply set up a proxy API endpoint in our serverless project to pass through all requests to an existing API. This is used for, for combining either multiple existing APIs into a single point, or if you're migrating a legacy API into serverless, but don't want to have to do it all at once, you can proxy all requests through serverless to your existing API. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up because it helps the YouTube algorithm show it to more developers like yourselves. And if you want to hear more about serverless, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so that you get notified 
every time I release one of my weekly videos. Thank you and I'll see you in a new video.